Stories like this are why a lot of women avoid spaces that are dominated by men. A 24-year-old lady by the name of Josephine Karimi Simon went missing seven days after she got a job in a church. A disappearance that shocked a lot of people, including her own parents. And when the search began for her, it felt almost as though there was hope at the end of the tunnel. But by the end of this whole journey of looking for this young lady, it turned out tragedy was a light they saw at the end of the tunnel. Josephine was a young girl looking for work in Kenya. And on Monday, the 19th of June, 2023, she was appointed a secretary in the CWA segment of the Catholic church she most possibly attended. It's not clear if she went to the church. Now, the CWA is called the Catholic Women Association. So she was a secretary at the Catholic Women Association Center in Kiaragana, Embu County in Kenya. Now, when she got to the center, it seemed as though it was associated or in the same space as the church premises. It's possible it wasn't. However, one of the first red flags they say she may have noticed but didn't register in her head was the fact that a lot of all the other workers in that center were all men. From the gardener to the gate man to the security man to even the priest that lived also in the same compound. There were other laborers and handy men that came around and there were also men. She, it was said, was the only woman working in that compound and this women association center was located in a very remote area, in a very remote community, one of those places that are usually quiet or mostly loud only when it comes to the Sunday services. And maybe she didn't think too much of it, but I know a lot of women who would find it a red flag. Even entering a taxi where it's mostly men that are in it in a public transport setting, many women would refuse to do so. And maybe she did not have any job or she had been really looking for a job to get by and take care of herself or her, or her family. Of course, this was a red flag she was willing to ignore. By the way, it's a church. It's a Catholic church, a holy place. Where else could she feel safe other than a church? And I'm sure that could have been one reason why she went on to take the job. However, just seven days later, on the 28th of June, one week after getting this job, she did not return home to her parents. Earlier that day, it was said she had had breakfast with her mom and had told the mom goodbye that she was going to work. And that was how she went to work. And by the end of the day, she didn't return home. Her parents became worried. They tried calling her phone a number of times, but it was switched off. They even made calls to the priest and the priest kept telling them that she wasn't in the compound, she wasn't in the premises, that he had gone looking for her and he couldn't find her, that it's possible she had left to come home. It was the next day, the Thursday 29th, that the priest, maybe to him, he hadn't registered in his head that this girl was missing, called the parents of the girl to ask why their daughter did not come to work the next day. And that was when the parents were like, she didn't come home the, the previous day, the 28th. And the parents came to the church looking for her. They couldn't find her. They went other places thinking maybe she had gotten lost on her way or if she had gone somewhere else. They kept asking questions around, but no one could give them a reasonable answer as to where their daughter was. I could assume they asked all the other workers in the premises, but there was no answer given. Nobody could say when they saw her last or if she actually left the church. It officially became a missing person case because the family went to the police and made reports that their daughter, Josephine, was missing. Before then, they had done their own personal search. They had put her pictures on social media. They had posted her picture everywhere, asking people with any information. I don't know, but I feel like the parents should have gone earlier to the police but it was said it was on the 1st of July, a few three days later or four days later, that the father of Josephine went to the police. After dropping their statement, the police told the man to go home. And two days later, the police called the family. It turned out that the police had gone to the Catholic Women Association Center to pick up their very first suspect which turned out to be a casual worker, a laborer there, one of those men employed to work in the premises. It appeared that the police may have gone to do their investigation or somehow they may have been able to do their job because the reason why it's not so clear how many people they had in mind or how many people they had investigated before they went directly for this specific man. They didn't go for the security man, they didn't go for the priest, they didn't go for probably other workers in that premises. They went directly for the laborer, the casual worker who also worked in the building. And from their investigation, they found out that the man had put his SIM card in Josephine's mobile phone. And that was kind of how they knew that he most likely knew where Josephine was 
all knew what had happened to Justin. If anything had happened, it was then that he was questioned for hours as to how he got the phone and where Justin was. And he denied multiple times, but eventually the laborer confessed that he knew where Justin was and that Justin was safe. And that was when he took the police to the women's center, to the workplace there, and directed them to the pit toilet where he assumed that Josephine was kept captive, only for them to look down the septic tank and realize that Josephine was dead and her body was floating. It's not clear if this casual worker was mentally stable. It's not clear if he knew what he was doing, if he knew what he was saying. For him to, first of all, claim that she was safe and alive and only to take them to a septic tank where her body was found floating, it makes you wonder, did he leave her alive when he dropped her there or had he already killed her? It's not however clear the state of Josephine's body or what may have been done to her to have caused her life if she was hit with a blunt force, if she was sexually assaulted, if she was strangled. It's very possible that he may have sexually assaulted her, strangled her and dumped her body in the septic tank. The man was immediately arrested and a lot of people are calling for a lot more safety and extra protection given to women who most possibly work in male-dominated environments. It's really unfair what happened to her. It's surprising to me but is it possible that he acted alone? He hasn't confessed anybody else was involved, but I can imagine him being able to do such a thing in such remote environment, in such quiet area, and getting away with it. It's just unfortunate. So, but you guys, let me know what you think about the story. Let me know your thoughts. Don't forget to like, share, comment your opinions. And also, if you're a woman, would you feel safe working in a male-dominated area? Do you think that has always been a problem for you or do you think it's something that you can do well with? Because I know there was another story that we didn't get to do here, but this one happened in Nigeria, somewhere in Imo State, of a lady who worked in a gas plant and she too was a victim of a co-worker or co-workers assaulting her, beating her and even ending up murdering her because they wanted to collect money and she was doing her job to prevent them from getting the money and they ended up killing her and burying her in a shallow grave. So we've seen similar incidents like this where women who work in male-dominated spaces seem to fall victim for such horrible crimes and such terrible things being done to them. But the good thing is these people get caught and they get to face the law. It's just unfortunate that these things had to happen to these women and it shouldn't be the case. But if you're a woman working in a male-dominated space, let me know what measures you take to be safe or to protect yourself. And also let us know in the comment section if you've also faced any threats to your life working in a male-dominated space. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe if you haven't subscribed.